I'd like to give everybody the opportunity to be on a game show. Imagine there are three doors behind me, and behind one of those doors, there's a brand new car. Behind the other two doors, there are either a toothbrush or a penny. I want everybody to, in their heads, think of a number of which door they would like to select. Two. In your heads. What if I told you that one of the doors that you did not select for sure does not have the car inside? Which means that there are now two possibilities of which door could have the car of your dreams. Let me ask you a question. Do you want to hold on to the door that you've already selected or would you like to swap the decision and move to the last remaining door that hasn't been discussed yet? Raise your hand if you'd like to hold on to the number that you already have in your head. Okay, so everybody in this room. Statistically, your chances of getting the car are far less if you stay hold with your original decision as opposed to if you had swapped to the other remaining door and let me explain why. When you make your selection, there's a 33.3% chance for you to be accurate. But here's what we need to understand. Imagine for a second that I was correct in my assumption that whichever door I chose had the car. If I swap, I'm moving over from a car, right, to a potential toothbrush. The chances of that happening has to only be 33.3%. If I went with one of the other options, I did not select the car at my initial start, automatically, doesn't matter which I pick out of the toothbrush or the penny, I would automatically be guaranteed the car had I selected one of the other options. Because I'm eliminating the other option. So my chances of getting a car if I don't choose it at the beginning are 66.6%. I want to tell you a story about an interesting part of my life. Before I was working here, I used to work in a wholesale company. Everybody here knows that. But what very few of you know is that the way I exited and the way I left was probably one of the most peculiar moments of my life. My time was, was nearing its end at this company and I gave it one last effort in order to make it work. The company was uh, successful with selling clothing with licenses. And I used to work for the National Football League. And so I reached out to my former boss at the NFL. Can you get us a meeting? They get us a very, very difficult, almost impossible meeting to get with the licensing people of the NFL. And we have the meeting. And the meeting goes great. And now it happens to be a moment, uh, it was the high holidays time. And all I'm thinking about and all I'm recognizing is how thankful I am to God that he gave me this amazing opportunity and I'm reflecting back on my journey. And I can see the stars aligning. How I went to St. John's University, a school that nobody thought I should go to, that was not even on the radar at the time of high school. Then somehow by fluke chance I end up making friends with the dean. And then when the NFL called the school, I was recommended one of three people of the entire school. They said Aaron could be a guy who can go uh, intern at the NFL. And all I kept thinking about was how amazing it is, God, look at what you're doing for me. I'm so thankful. I'm so appreciative. Let's close the deal. Let's get the license. Let's make it work at this wholesale company. Months go by. There is no phone call from the NFL. And I was left confused, I was left puzzled, I was left angered. And now I started to 
get angry with God. God, what are you doing to me? It's like you proposed to me for marriage and you stood me up at the altar. What's going on? I went through this whole journey. I thought this was the blueprint. The stars were aligned. And this is what you do to me. This is how you leave me high to dry. I'm married. I have a family to support. And now I'm out of a job. God, what are you doing to me? Fast forward two years into the future. I end up at Barkai. One of the single most greatest moments that have ever happened to me in my lifetime. And now looking back, the fact that the NFL never called back was the greatest thing that ever happened to me. But at the time I couldn't recognize that. Because just like your opportunity to obtain a car with three doors, we think we know what we want and we think we know how to get what we want. But the statistics will show that your instincts will not maximize your chances to get what you want because you don't even know what's best for you or what's not best for you. So why do we do this? Why is it that we have the audacity when confronted with an opportunity to show respect for individuals that we think that we need to go through this crazy vetting process, right? Teacher says, put the book away. Why should I put the book away? It doesn't say it in the rule book that I need to put my book away. Why would you say such a thing? Explain it to me right now. I don't understand it. Right? Mom tells us, honey, could you go put your, your plate in the sink? Why should I have to do it? The chadem is right there. I have to go put this thing in the sink. What are you doing to me? Explain to me why I have to do this. Go, tell me right now. Why do I need to do it? And I don't think there's a more fitting holiday to discuss this concept other than the one that's coming up. Pesa read a fantastic article by Rabbi Yosef Piton, actually combining two separate articles, but he explains the following concept about Pesach and what it is that we should be thinking about, recognizing, and be appreciative during this time. And he says the following. If you never experienced darkness and all you knew was light, Would you know what it is to be in darkness? Would you know what that is? No, right? All you would know is light. Right? How could you ever know to want or to need darkness? So Ben Israel, right, were asked by God to leave Egypt. Right? And for all of us sitting in this room in 2018, what are we thinking to ourselves? What kind of a hidush is that? Of course you should want to leave slavery. Why wouldn't they want to leave? It was the easiest no-brainer decision in the world. You guys are being treated terribly. You guys are a bunch of slaves. Leave! But if I've never been free before, and if I've never known what it is to experience that type of life, how do I know that I want it? Us in 2018, of course we're free today, and so we can understand and appreciate what it is to have that type of lifestyle. But for them, understand what the Jews were going through. They were living in a place of comfort. Weird to even think that that's a way that they were thinking and feeling. But this is all they knew. They knew that they had food. They knew that they had water. They knew that they had shelter. All of a sudden, they get told by Borei Olam, I want you to leave and go to the desert where there's no food, there's no water. Figure it out. And what could they have done? They could have done what we all usually do. Explain it to me. Tell me why I need to do it. I don't understand. This doesn't make sense to me. I'm not doing it until it makes sense to me. But that's not what they did. Right away, without even a moment's notice, without even thought, they leave. They listen. They do it because they're respectful and they do it because this is what they're being told to do. They didn't even have time to wait for the bread to rise. Imagine had they spent even a second to do what it is that we normally do when we're in these situations. They would have never left, they would have never understood what it is to experience freedom, to be saved by God.
So we have holiday of Passover. We have this amazing concept of understanding what it is just to live by a code of values, to be respectful. But not just that, boys. What we think we know doesn't always turn out to be what's best for us. Right? We choose door number two. Turns out it doesn't even get us the car. Had you went with the other direction, you would have maximized your chances for success to get the car. So who in this room wants to do what Ben Israel did a long, long, long time ago? Which was when they were confronted with an opportunity and they were challenged with something that didn't make sense. They thought about what it is that they were doing and who it was that they were doing it for. And without the reasoning and without all of the justification, they said, you know what? We're in. So when your teacher asks you something, when your mother on the holiday asks you of something, are we going to do what the average Joe normally does? Are we going to do what everybody usually does? Which is, I don't understand, explain it to me because I'm not doing it. I'm not moving until you make sense of it to me. Or could we recognize that there's something in life called process? And not always does it make sense to me, not always is it so clear to me, but I'm not going to do it because it for sure makes sense or not, because I don't even know what it is at the moment. But what I do know is that if I live by a set of values, and if I allow these values to guide my life, it will maximize my chances of success. You would have never thought when the game show first started that you should be choosing to find the toothbrush behind the door to help you get a car. Life works in mysterious ways. The question is, which door will you open and how will you respond when it doesn't work out the way you thought it would? Happy holidays.